Hello world, this is Prophet Walker coming to you with another night of prophecy, prayer, and just, just uh, we're just going to be talking to the Lord and talk, telling, speaking to you about how we as men and women of God, as prophets, hear from the Lord. And um, we're going to go straight on into prayer and then I hit some scriptures and um, let me get the, started off with, let me get the Hedricks to lead us off in prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing this hour. Lord Jesus, we just want to put our minds on you, Lord Jesus. We put on the mind of Christ. We pray, Lord Jesus, you get all the glory and praise out this video. I pray, Lord Jesus, and uh, Holy Spirit. I just, you know, actually, Lord, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Ho thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask you, please guide us and lead us, Holy Spirit, that um, we say the things you want us to say, Lord Jesus. And, and then we just want this to be a, a, a time of just, just being edified, a time where iron sharpen eyes, a time where the, where the Holy Spirit just moving through us so strong. And anybody that come to watch this video or this live, um, that when they watch it, they'll be uh, just filled with your spirit, Lord Jesus, that they would be, uh, their hearts would be touched, Lord God. And we just thank you, Jesus, because you're the one that do it. So, Lord, we just give you glory and praise in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, let, me, let me share a few scriptures. And um, okay, so we know that, um, okay, okay, this is a high time of prophecy. Prophecy, all that. Prophecy is when you hear a message from the Lord. God speaks to his, his, his called ones, uh, his watchmen, his pastors, and they give that message from the Lord to a person. Now, prophecy concerns the foretelling of, of an event. As a prophet, we I can clearly hear the Lord talk about something that's going to come to pass. It currently has not, it's not going, it's not going on right now, but it will come to pass. Prophecy is throughout the Bible. Even Jesus said, I'm coming back soon. He's not back now, but there's a date and a time when he will come back to get his church. So prophecy deals about something that's going to happen. And as a prophet, your ears and your eyes and your spirit is connected to the Father, and the Father will release words to you. And if Enoch is coming to my mind. Enoch was walks, he was so close to God, he said he walked with God. Okay, walking with someone, you're in alignment, you're in agreement. You you know what I'm saying? You're walking, even the Bible says you can't walk with someone unless you agree. So in walking with someone, even the rain was talking about is having a prayer walk, it's walking and talking to the Lord. If you're walking and talking to the Lord, he's going to reveal things to you. A prophet or even prophecy. I have the office. I, God told me I was a prophet when I was young. He told me that. But you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. Uh, in, in Acts 2, 17 and 18 says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy young men to dream dreams old men to see visions um, upon my servants and my handmaidens I, will, handmaidens I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy so if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit you can prophesy God says covet to prophesy okay so you, you release, uh, God is going to release words to you for edification Confirmation will even reveal the secrets of men's hearts to you, and you release those words to people. Um, and it's the scriptures. I'm gonna put the scriptures in the uh, in the uh, you know in the description. Um, but I at least want to get one particular one. The scripture I just read was Acts two seventeen and eighteen. There's another scripture that says God won't do anything in the earth without revealing it to His servants, the prophets. So even to me, I don't understand that huh? because you're almighty God. But that's the closeness that God considers his service, that he won't do anything without talking to us. We're his ambassadors. So he's revealing things. People don't know, why, why Camille having all these dreams and visions? Because she's a prophetess. And because she has a closeness with God, because God has a, a will to be done in the earth. Why God talking to Sean and Tyrus and Rain? Why God talking to all these prophets on YouTube? Because the Lord is speaking to the world come to me repent and he's not letting you know what's going on in the earth what he is doing 
who he wants to save, who he is angry with, uh, what the judgment is, what the blessings are. He's communicating his will to his ambassadors, people he's chosen, who walk with God and pray to God and talk to God. Uh, and, and, and you can talk to God all day long if you want to. It's up to you. It depends on your amount of sacrifice and your intimacy with the Lord. Some people, you don't hear from God because you, you pray in the morning and at night. And you see a quick prayer and get in the bed. You don't give God the opportunity. I don't been there myself. You don't give the opportunity, God, an opportunity to speak to you. You know what I'm saying? But God says, the scripture says, you're supposed to pray without ceasing. You're talking to the Lord all day. It's a relationship. It's a it's like a marriage. You, you, you're communicating with your father. You're communicating with him. And you, you want to hear his will. You avail your ears to him. And he'll speak. But, um, there's two scriptures that come to mind. One I know is in Numbers, and it deals with um, Moses and Aaron. But um, it, 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 it reveals how God speaks. Um, and then another one talks about the small, still voice of the Lord. And what I'm going to do is I'll probably get that one first. And I like to start out with his word, because God is his word. Uh, so... Um, Okay, so this is 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. So he's talking to the prophet Elijah, and Elijah wants to hear from the Lord. And this is uh, 19, 11 through 13. And he said, go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. So God is showing up, but he's letting them know that God speaks in a small, still voice. You have to be quiet. You listen to the Lord. And that's one way he speaks. I hear the voice of the Lord. I think everyone in here, you know, God speaks in different ways. But I hear his voice. I uh, also see images. Um, and let's go. And God will speak to you at any time. Morning, noon, and night. I was having a conversation with another uh, one, another prophet. Uh, sometimes people think, "Well, I'm too busy." No, I'm not. I've never. God ain't never said, said I was too busy to hear from him. You got too much going on. Uh, I've heard from God from it, washing dishes in the shower, driving a car. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I still hear His voice, and it also gets to the point where you're number one. Your faith level also depends on how much God will reveal to you and show to you. Uh, you say, well, God, God don't talk to people every day like that. And God will, he will withdraw from you because you just don't believe that he will, he will speak to you. You know what I'm saying? I believe God will speak to you any, any time, all the time. He speaks, he speaks in dreams. He speaks in corporate prayer. But he will talk to you and tell you whatever. And I don't limit God on what the Lord will tell me. Don't. I mean, you just you just gonna really miss the boat. Then God can tell you what He wants to tell anybody what they want to, um, what um they want to. Um, let me find this scripture real quick. Um, now this is Aaron and Moses. Um, Aaron and Miriam, they're the brother and sister of Moses. Okay, and they speak against Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman. As if to say that he has sinned against God. And so we're in Numbers 12. And the, the point was, to, it was just to show that God speaks. Uh, he gives us an example of how he speaks to his prophets. And Miriam and Moses, uh, Aaron are prophets as well. Um, but the, I'm not, don't want to deal about what they did, but how God said that he spoke to the prophets. And, he, and this is Numbers 12 and 6 and he's so the Lord had called the three 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 of them together and began to speak to them and he's chastising Aaron and Miriam but he talks tells them how I speak to prophets and he says and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet prophet among you I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream so in there God is telling you how I speak to prophets in a vision and dreams you want to, okay, God speaks to, you know, different ones here in visions and dreams. 
brain constantly telling me she reading me left and right, talking about the dreams she don't have about me. I'm like, okay, right? Yeah, everything you're saying is true. You know what I'm saying? But that's the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I encourage everyone who's here, number one, God will speak to you. Not here, um, who's watching. God will speak to you abundantly in your in your dreams. He not just you, he will speak to you concerning anything. You, your family, your children, your relatives, the world, anything he wants to. And uh, one example is Samuel. When God first spoke to Samuel, God didn't give him no baby word. There's no such thing. He spoke to Samuel as a child and told him, I'm going to kill Eli's two sons for, for the sin that they did, and I'm going to get Eli too. And he he's a child, and he, and he had to release that word. So um, let me just say, we just start us off. Uh, okay, maybe we already going to pray, but uh, maybe anyone else, so give me an example of how the Lord speaks to you. I do. Uh, I know with me, um, I hear his voice all the time, whether it be, you know, me and my wife, we in grocery stores or I'm playing basketball, I'm working out, you know, and it's like that small, still voice, you know. Um, I know if I want to hear his voice the clearest and I can hear his voice clear then, it's, it's something about worship. You know, it's something about mm -hmm. when you get in that place of worship. Yeah. Um, it's because the atmosphere in your room or your car, wherever you're at, it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it just be moving so strong, you know. And But for me, it's like when God speaks to me, you know, it could be just one word. It don't have to always be like a, a deep, long word. Um, but he speaks multiple ways. I think what was beneficial for me was before a long time and when I asked to hear the voice of God, I was getting frustrated and stuff like that. And I was thinking like what I expected out of it, instead of just, I learned God humbled me. He, and he, you know, he taught me just like not to put him in a box, you know, and just to seek him for who he is, seek him diligently and it's going to happen. And as I saw him diligently and I was hungry to hear his words, so I, I'm like, if I'm going to, if he going to speak, you know, it's going to align with his word. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was like reading his word so much. And then when I started hearing the voice of God, I'm like, this aligns with the Bible. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff, you know, the Lord be saying. So it's just like that small, still voice or, you know, dreams and visions. Like for me recently, like the vision's been kind of picking up, um, you know, um, it'd be like in the middle of the night, I wake up and then like right when I lay my head down, I'm like, I'm tired, I'm about to take a nap. I just start seeing stuff you know, uh, seeing stuff about the world and stuff like that. And then I let my wife share it too, but she gets a whole lot of dreams and visions and words from God as well. But that, that's how it is for me, you know. Yeah, um, it's the same for me as well. Um, I'll hear his voice. Um, a lot of deep, deep words, like Sean was saying, um, happen when we are in worship. You know, we'll just spend like time with the Lord, either praying in tongues, listening to worship music, just laying on our face you know, for maybe like an hour or so. And it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be that long. It's just the, the intimacy that we spend with God. And, you know, we'll just be thanking him, you know, just giving him praise and, and honor and glory for who he is. And then we'll just get a whole word about, you know, a war that's going on somewhere else or, you know, just something very random. So a lot of our deep, detailed words um, do come from a place of worship. Um, I also hear um, all throughout the day, I could be washing dishes, just like Charles said, um, taking a bath, um, just doing whatever outside in public um, to minister to somebody. I'll get like words about the people that I'm that I'm just seeing, like strangers, um, things that they deal with in a secret. Um, a lot of words and knowledge through dreams. I get a lot of detailed words and knowledge through dreams um, about people that he'll want me to either minister to. Um, stuff that you know that, that that they're dealing with in the secret or just words that he tells me to release on um, on youtube a lot of people know me from youtube i get a lot of words that he'll tell me i want you to make a video about this so um the dreams that happen in the middle of the night or um visions i get a lot of visions and the visions they happen throughout the day but it's it's mostly um more clear like when i'm in that is I, I believe it's called like a twilight um, uh, 
uh, stage where like you're you're falling asleep or just about to wake up or you're um, it's it's in between that stage. So it's it's either when I'm about to get up or when I'm about to fall asleep, I'll get the most clear visions. And I get a lot, a lot of visions throughout the night. Um, sometimes I'm up for hours, hours, uh, at least like maybe once, once a week. I believe the Lord sometimes will let me sleep in, but I get a lot of detailed words throughout the night while I'm just up for hours, um, just writing down the things that I'm seeing and the words that the Lord has given me. So um, he does speak um, through the visions, the dreams and his voice. So that's, that's mainly how I hear. Amen. What about you, uh, Rain? Yeah, the Lord, he speaks to me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, he speaks to me a lot in uh in dreams. And um it really I really just like try to be a friend of the Holy Spirit. Like I'm like, Holy Spirit, you're my best friend. Like I include him in every in every detail of my life. Like I think it's a uh, proverb, it says the Lord delights in all of our ways and every detail of our life. So I started making a habit like to become aware of his presence. I'm like, Holy Spirit, let me be aware of your presence every hour. So as I'm going about my day, like nursing my baby, <laughs> like I'm always nursing my baby or me and my son just like doing a puzzle or something. He'll like come on my mind and I'll just thank him in my heart. I try to connect with him in my heart a lot. And, you know, I'll do that all throughout the day. And then he'll give me dreams. I'll have visions, but lately I've been praying about, um, hold on one second, my son, sorry, sorry. Lately I've been praying about like the seven spirits of God and the Lord has been revealing more of that to me. And the seven spirits of God, you know, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, might, counsel, fear the Lord and the Holy Spirit. So my like, Lord, impart those upon me, Lord, so I can just impart, impart wisdom, knowledge, understanding unto me. Impart those things unto me, Lord. Like all of your seven spirits. Like, and I just try to include him in everything. And he'll give me dreams about, you know, my friends, my family, um, things he want me to do. And, and that's that's really how he that's really how he speaks to me. Mm-hmm. What about you, um, Mister Taurus? Hey, Amen. I believe that the Lord he speaks to me the most i also agree through dreams he speaks to me through a lot of dreams <laughs> and it's usually when i've spent a lot of heavy time in prayer a lot of heavy time in prayer with the lord it just it's like a explosion i don't know how to put it into words but the holy spirit just starts to release so much amen 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 um Okay, let me okay, and so let me give you an example. Since I said a small still voice, um, I hear the Lord talking all the time. I hear the Lord uh telling like to um just I just I hear the Lord, he talks, the Holy Spirit talks to you. And I was encourage you, yeah, if you're watching, ask the Lord to talk to you. If you if you're not hearing from the Lord, say, Father, speak to me. Avail yourself to hear. Lean into the Lord. You know I'm saying earnestly desire the gift. Father, I want to hear from you. Father, give me a dream. Ask him. God says, ask and it should be given. That those, that's not bad things. You know what I'm saying? You want to have, like, Ray says, Holy Spirit is, is my friend. So they spend time worshiping the Lord. Some things God wants to, he wants you to seek him. Seek him. And I ain't talking about, and I, I, I and I, I'm just being real. Now I, I can pray for an hour. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> That was the time I, I said the Lord press so quick. I know when I really I felt convicted. I said the Lord press so quick. Hopped up in the bed, wrapped the covers over me, and I was like, "Oh, like." But you know what I'm saying. And so you don't want to just get in a routine of you prayed, but you just it was more religious. You prayed because you thought you oh I have to pray in the morning and at night. You see what I'm saying? But you uh you said so quick and fast. My God, looking at you like you didn't give me no time to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? And you hop in the bed, going to sleep. Or you get up. You said the Lord prayer real quick. Start your day. You ain't spent no time with God. Come on, y'all. I don't been there. I've been there. I, I know what it is. And I was at a church where they was preaching about pray, pray with the Lord for an hour. Desire the intimacy with the Lord. And 
then um, even Jesus, he, his disciples, he asked them to pray with him for an hour in the garden. So through worship, I hear from the Lord. Prayer, individual prayer and corporate prayer, I hear from the Lord. And so and then um, let me see something amazing the Lord has told me. Um, um, okay, when the Lord talks to me, he always calls me son. Like if I'm talking to the Lord, he'll say son. I don't I don't ever remember hearing the Lord call me Charles. I can't I, he doesn't do that. He called he'll say son. He's talking. I say son. He'll just say keep saying son. So that's when I, I know the Lord is talking to me. Um uh now dreams, I don't have as many dreams. I have had dreams of the Lord though. Um and I, and I encourage anyone if you're having a dream from the Lord. First thing you do is give the, you talk to the Lord. God gave you a dream. He wants you to understand the dream. Talk to him. Father, what does that mean? Ask him. Give him some time to reveal it to you. And he will. It, even that that's intimacy. He gave you a download. He wants you to, Father, what does that mean? What, who is this for? What do I do with that? You know what I'm saying? Don't just have dreams and, well, I had a dream, but you don't, you got this it, interaction. Um, with the Lord. So, um, uh, let's see. And I also believe in God. This is a high time of prophecy. Receive. It's so important for us to, when the Lord speaks, for you to move. God speaking to move. And not just from me. When the Lord speaks from the prophets, you hear a man of God, you hear your pastor, you hear an apostle, you hear the prophets tell you what thus of the Lord, believe it. You hear the Lord say, um, a prophet tell you something, believe it, act upon it. We, we, we'll see a scripture and we'll say, oh yeah, God says, don't do this, do that. that. That's God's word. But when God speaks a word through his prophet, that's his word. He's giving you his word. So, you know, rain, tell me something. I'm, 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 okay, that's what the Lord is telling me. Sean Camille, tell me something. Okay, that's the Lord talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Take your heed. And I use an example. I, I, I told it. Camille them before. Camille prophesied about they got fake food at Walmart and Chipotle. So I'm not saying that right. Chipotle, whatever. I previously during my wilderness season, I could eat twice a day, uh, no meat. I was and you know and I was working. There's very few places that are fast friendly. I mean, you they got hamburgers and they got French fries and they got stuff you can't eat on a fast. So, but Chipotle, I would get a spoonful of rice and a spoonful of beans and I would eat that. So when she gave the word that God told her fake food, I'm like, what you talking about, Lord? Like, you ain't said nothing to me about no fake food. Then I couldn't eat that. You know how? He said, now you know. But that was the word from her. The Lord didn't tell me that. You know what I'm saying? He tells us in part. Then the Lord talk, she told us some Lord told me about Walmart. I was like, oh, goodness. Walmart, Lord, you know how I feel about Walmart. God said, son, there's a grocery store for you. So even though you uh, it's don't don't think that because it comes from a prophet, that's not the Lord's word. That's the that's the word from the Lord, even if you do hear from God. And so I had to receive it, even though I had fun feelings about Walmart. I love Mr. Walmart. I can shop, do everything I need there in Walmart. But the prophetess said, the Lord said, you got some fake foods there. And I asked the Lord, and the Lord said, Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be cautious, but um, I receive the word. And so we can't pick and choose the word of the Lord. You can't pick and choose as well. When when a prophet says something, if it feel good and sound good, oh, you, hey, I love that. But when they tell you something that's close to your heart or something that you need to cut off, you don't want to receive it. Uh, we, we can't do that. So um, maybe you guys want to maybe share a, a vision or a dream or a word the Lord gave you and uh, what did you learn from it, or how did you know? How did you tell it, or any interactions like, like that? Yeah, um, I just want to say, uh, when we was talking about this, especially about the dreams. I was going to read off a, a verse in Job. It's in Job thirty-three, verse. I read from fourteen through sixteen. It says, "For God speak once, yet twice; yet a man perceive not in the dream and the vision of, of the night." When deep sleep fell upon men and slumberings upon and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Amen. So 
Uh, I never I came across that verse when it comes to dreams, because when you get these dreams from God, God gives you instructions, you know, a lot of times. The Holy Spirit gives you instructions on what to do. So that just came to mind about that. But um, I did want to say some, uh, Charles, about the small, still voice you see here all the time. Like, you know, I hear God speak to me, you know, and it's, it's that faith level. It's that faith level and that intimacy where you start getting some deeper words from God. And, um, you know, God used you in a major way, Charles, like, to have that boldness for me to speak out what I'd be hearing from the Lord. You'd be like, well, speak proper, speak proper. Y'all be, you'd be saying that. Time. You know, it's funny time. It's, uh, there's times I heard the Lord speaking to me, but he would use Charles' voice and he'd be like, speak proper. I hear. And I'd be, God'd be like, I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm like what are you going to say to that? I'd be like, I hear speak proper. I'm like, I'm like, that's funny. Um, uh, makes me think about how uh, Samuel, he thought his father was speaking to him, but it wasn't his natural father. It was his father in heaven was speaking to him. So it made me think about that. But um, but yeah, so like I get times like uh what was that? We was in um we was in doggone um uh, like them outlet malls, like them little outlet malls walking outside. I heard mm -hmm. the Lord say, preach, like just preach. And I was like, all right. I was like, I I've done this before. Like I did in like grocery stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like he just told me to preach and stuff. And it's all for the glory of God. But you know, and then I heard that and you know, it's just like I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit on me, like that unction to preach. Mm -hmm. So I just started just preaching the gospel. People looking at me crazy. People looking back at me like, "What is boy? What is boy talking about?" Like, like legit, like just looking at me crazy. I'm telling them about repentance and all this stuff and how they need to give their life to Christ if they haven't. Telling them about like Allah, Buddha, all that stuff is fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just just start preaching. You know, but that's just how I hear the voice of God. Or it could be times like, you know, I was at my job before and I seen this uh, older couple. And they was married. Um, the Lord spoke to me like while I'm talking to them about something job related. I'm hearing the Lord speak as well. Like, give me a word of knowledge about them. Like, you know, and he's telling me how like they was meant to be together. He gave me a word for uh, the wife and said like, she has a powerful testimony. They both have powerful testimony. But he just revealed to me like, she had a um, a testimony that she used to, she had like a disease or like, a, like a, a form of sickness that was like bothering for a long time. And the Lord saved her from that, you know? And I told her about it and she just, started busting up crying like she just started like busting up crying she's like she's like like how do you know this i'm like this is the lord you know the lord told me this uh you know and he told me how he has your he has his hand on your life and y'all meant to be together and you know blessings coming upon your life and being being a god and they were just they were just you know broken down like but that's why it's important to be obedient to do what god wants us to do because it can minister some to somebody whether it's through repentance whether it's through a form of confirmation, whether it's something, even something like they, something they went through in the past, you know what I'm saying? You, and it's like, how can you know about this? They know it's from the Lord. We tell them that, Amen. or, you know, all other ways. So, you know, I just want to share that when you talk about the voice of God, Amen. but um, I'll let somebody else speak to, uh, I'll let, you know, Camille, you want to share what come the dreams and visions. And um, I forgot what was your question. You said, because your, your answer was kind of different. To what you asked you asked something different though what was your question charles what is explains always some it's like it's a, somehow god has spoken to you or gives in a dream that he gave you and you know uh how it how did that come to pass or how did that uh like how did you just just talk about a business dream because we've talked about some dreams that you had you know one particular one that you thought was one thing that came out to be another you know what i'm saying so um just just Tell me some of your experiences. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, I've had some where, like, well, I, had, I remember one, I had a, a neighbor, and I had a dream where the Lord was showing me, praying for this neighbor in person, like ministering to her, telling her about Jesus, you know, having her, um, you know, give her life to Christ in person. I'm doing this in person in my dream. And then it's like the scene changed to where I was on my way to church and she was asking to borrow my iron, right? So then like two weeks later, all of that came to pass. Like, you know, I, she knocked on my door one day and I said, you know, the Lord told me X, Y, Z. And, you know, I started praying for her and She's like shaking really bad. And, you know, because she, she's giving her life to Christ. She's like, I can, there's some type of form of deliverance that's going on as I'm praying for her. And, you know, I invite her to church. And immediately after she knocks on my door, you know, asking me to borrow my iron because she needs an iron to iron her clothes for church. 
So, I mean, I thought that that was pretty amazing, you yeah. know, because what if I didn't, you know, step out on faith and actually speak to her about the Lord, actually pray for her and stuff, you know? So um, that's one thing that um, I've seen came to pass. Um, a lot of my, a lot of my messages, a lot of them, at least the ones that I give out um, publicly, those are like very futuristic, um, like the food shortages, the famines, um, just kind of like in-depth things that like people just don't know about. Um, as far as like what Charles has said, like not eating at Chipotle, um, the Lord has uh, told me some things about KFC, how um, they're injecting the, the, the chicken there. Um, so these are kind of like, kind of like secrets that just aren't being exposed. So uh, for me, I get a lot of exposing, like behind the scenes, what's really going on, what the Lord is, is, is he wants me to reveal to the public that Amen. the public can't see. Amen. And that's what I get a lot. I get a lot. I do get other things where, you know, the Lord will show me, he wants me to minister to somebody who will show me um, things that are going on with people I went to school with or ever had a job with or um, each and every single one of my family members, the Lord has shown me about, um, you know, and that's just to intercede as well. You know, a lot of times the Lord will, he'll, he'll give me these words so that I can intercede on their behalf and just pray for them. So mm -hmm. you, when you, um, as you grow intimate, more intimate with God, you'll be able to um, understand like, okay, do I bring this word to this person? Or do I just pray for them? Because a lot of these things are very personal. And sometimes, you know, the way that God operates, he'll put you in a place where you're not comfortable. You know, he, God is all about uncomfortability because he wants to elevate you. And that's just the way that he works. You know, he's going to elevate you, but are you going to be obedient to do the things that he's telling you to do? So yeah, a lot, um, a lot of my stuff, that I received from the Lord, um, I just, I go to the person, you know, and I tell them, hey, you know, I have a message from the Lord. A lot of times, you know, these people are still in the world too. They don't really know about prophecy. So I won't explain what I see, but I'll just kind of explain what the Lord has given me for them. Like the, I'll just relay the message mm -hmm. in a way that they can better understand without saying, what do you mean? You know, because everybody's not going to understand prophecy and um, visions and dream interpretations, you know, the world may say, oh, you just ate something bad. You know, you had some pizza before you went to sleep, you know, or like you, you're, you're mental, you know, no, this is what the Lord said. You know, I just, I just deliver it like that when I'm delivering it in person. Amen. Um, so much that you said was just, just powerful, um, exposing, you know, revealing uh, to you things and he wants us to release it. So um, that the people can be edified and give warning. Okay, what about you, uh, Rain? Um, let's see. I remember, I remember this time, like, um, me and my, me and my mom and my two kids, like, we okay, so we was renting this house and we had to get out within like thirty days. So, you know, we was getting turned down, like, left and right, left and right. You know, we couldn't find anything in the places that we wanted to move into. You know, uh, we weren't get, we couldn't get anything. So. I remember I had went on like a uh, on a three day Daniel fast, and during those three days I had like I prayed the scripture, and it says like you know the Lord takes care of the birds in the sky, you know He'll take care He's gonna take care of us, you know you don't have to worry about these kind of things like where you're gonna stay clothes, you know you don't have to worry about this. So I had prayed that scripture and I went on a three day Daniel fast. And I'm like, Lord, we can't, we can't find nothing, Lord. My, come on, Lord, my babies, you know, what's up, Lord? You know, I you know, my friends. So I'm like, what's up, God? <laughs> so I had a dream that night and um, I seen like a house in my dream. And then I heard the Lord say 2,600. And I'm like, 2,600, okay, Lord. And I saw, and I saw like this image of this house. So the next day my mom had uh, shown me a house that she had found on Zillow. And I'm like, that's the house I, the Lord showed me in my dream. <laughs> it was the exact like how I dreamed it. It was the exact same house my mom had showed me. And I knew, I knew that was the house the Lord wanted us to get. I knew it without a shadow of a doubt because that's what he had showed me. And I was like, 2600, Lord, what did this mean? And I was like, third day of my fast, he had revealed to me that that was, uh, that was the square footage of the house. And we actually got the house, got that house the Lord showed me. And it was the exact square footage of the house. Mm, so, 
So Mama. just just really like a, a lifestyle, Mama. a pursuit, and you know, a, a lifestyle Mama. of fasting and pursuing Mama. the Lord. Mama. He gonna take Mama. care of you. He gonna take Mama. care of you. Just I would Mama. just encourage anyone to Mama. abide. Sorry, y'all. Sorry about that. My baby. I would just encourage anyone. You know, everyone who's listening, just abide in his love. Like, trust him. Abide in his love and trust him with even if the obstacle, circumstance, the situation is saying something other, trust his word, trust his promises, and he'll he'll show you and reveal everything to you if you just trust him. And um if he I would just encourage after you pray, you just sit, you just sit and listen and a scripture says quietness and confidence is our strength. If you just sit still and you wait on him, the Holy Spirit will draw you in. He'll draw you in and you'll be able to hear what he's saying to you if you just wait on him. Amen, amen, amen. Mr. Brown. Amen. Um, where, well, a dream that I had that comes to mind that I know that the Lord gave me was... um. It was before, because we, we all get all kinds of dreams. It's just so many of them. But one that clearly that I vividly remember, um, it was when my brother, before he had his, um, his son, and, you know, everybody was trying to find out the gender of the baby. And the Lord showed me. He, he showed me in a dream, both of them, in this room, in this room in our childhood home. And I had... No, and so I kind of knew before everybody, the Lord showed me then, before he even came forth, you know. But I see all different kinds of, lately God, I'd say this year, the past year, God has been giving me a lot of warning dreams for people. I've, I've, I've been seeing a lot of death on people. But I've seen marriage on people. I've seen divorce old people and God will show it to me through the dream um but yeah that's one of one small example that comes to mind right now okay and I, I'm a total agreement I've had a, I literally had, a, had an open vision but I was wide awake and he showed me something and it came to pass like in like two weeks so pro prophecy you know okay one thing I would encourage everyone with dealing with prophecy it's the foretelling of something. As a prophet, God will tell you what he wants to. He told Enoch in time. This is when Enoch was back in Methuselah day. When Enoch was old, he in, in the book of Genesis. He God spoke to him and showed him the end of the world. So as a prophet, you see not just with your natural eye, you can see ahead of time. God has given me prophetic words about children. They they toddlers. They they the age of uh, Rain's little boy, probably four years old. I literally got shown me this book. Uh, a friend told me about their son's life, uh, th th their wealth, what they put their gifts and talents, what they're going to be doing. So it will come to pass. I tell you, number one, you have to trust God. And you have to trust the words as a prophet. God give you a word. Do not doubt it. You trust it. Just like I trust the Bible, you trust the word that God gives you. You have to trust it. You know, God don't like that. You have to trust what he tells you. Okay. If someone gives you a word from the Lord, you someone prophesies over you, you have to trust it. And because the enemy will try you, he'll, he'll try to steal it from you, that you lose faith. You have to stand on it. That hey, the Lord told me, the, the woman of God, the man of God spoke to me. You hold fast to your word. But do not get dismayed. Do not be discouraged because your prophetic word take time god okay he, he speaks in the he god 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 is uh he's everlasting time means nothing to god it means nothing to him so he will reveal to you something that's 10 years 10, 10 years down the line so 10 years down the line tyrus you know what i'm saying uh you get a word about uh, something and so if the lord gives you a word you hear a word and number one, trust it. T talk to the Lord about it. But also, it's good to ask questions because I hear in part. Uh, if you don't ask no questions, he might not give you nothing else about it. So you ask him. 
but ask the Lord when. Ask the Lord, what should I be doing until I get my blessing? You pray over your, the, the words that you get. Uh, meditate on them. A lot of people write them down or go back and read those words because they encourage you. Because God has told me a lot of stuff concerning me that I will receive. I know one particular thing. I know it's been at least seven years. And the, when he spoke it, he said, soon. He said, you're going to be here soon. That was seven years ago. Okay, what you talking about, Lord? You have to understand God, his ways are higher than our ways. You know what I'm saying? Jesus said, I'm coming back soon. We know that's been 2,000 years. So don't get messed up because some people I know, the Lord has told them some things that they've been prophesied to them. But because life is happening, they're looking for the blessing and aren't rooted and grounded with the Lord right now. And so they lose hope, lose faith. Uh, you can't lose faith in your word in the blessing and the promise God has for you. If God telling you to wait on the hook, that he's coming. If you don't come when you want to, then don't you go out and try to find him. You know what I'm saying? If God is telling you, no, no, because we'll try to figure it out and God already told us. What are you talking about, y'all? You Abraham and Sarah. God told them, them. Abraham was Abram. God changed his name to Abraham. Sarah was Sarah. Changed her name to Sarah. He said, the child of promise that the nation of Israel must come through would come through them. The angels spoke, told Sarah when she was couldn't have kids, you're going to have a baby. She laughed in her spirit. She did not believe. The angel asked to her, why did you laugh? She said, I didn't laugh. He said, yes, you did. Okay, She didn't believe the, the word from the Lord. So she trying to figure it out. Well, Abraham, I got this servant, Hagar. Go and marry her. Go into her and produce the child. God didn't tell her to do none of that. There was not none of the instructions from the Lord. God didn't tell her that. But because she did not believe and because she had been waiting on this, this child for so long, she wanted to figure it out. You can, don't try. If you ever get an appointment, if you're trying to figure it out, you need to go sit down somewhere. You need to start praying. Because I'm telling you now, you're going to mess up. And then there's disobedience. That disobedience will cut blessings. When God on told you, gave you instructions on how to, how to get the money, how to get whatever, and you go outside his instructions, there's punishment. You might not get the blessing. You have to you have to stay, get your mind right. You know what I'm saying? Trust the Lord. Lord, I need to help with this. You know what I'm saying? Encourage yourself. So she wasn't told him to go and uh sleep with uh marry her, his uh, handmaiden. She had a baby. The Lord said, I didn't I didn't tell you to do that. I blessed the son because he came from Abraham. But that's not the child of promise. So, you know, we know the Lord did bless her with the child, but she did not believe, and he didn't believe either. Because if he believed when she said that, she would have checked him and said, no, that's not what the Lord told us. We're going to wait on the Lord. So, also, I, I encourage you this. Choose wisely who you tell the things that the Lord has given you. It ain't for everybody. If, if, if this person is not a person of faith, is not on a prophetic level, not hearing from God, they, they just ain't, are not going to understand how the Lord speaks to you. And and it's, you can be strong, and I, I get to give people grace, but, and then I can explain it and, and, and talk to them, but a lot of times, the stuff, the intimate stuff the Lord tell me, and I tell the wrong person, the Lord ain't told you that, child. Who are you to tell me what the Lord don't told? He did tell me that. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I just don't even I get to the point where certain things, people, I don't even, I don't even tell them what the Lord don't tell them. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they're not on the level where they even believe that God will speak to you in that way. So you have to guard the word the Lord gives you. You have to guard your vision and dream till the Lord say release it. Um, if they don't receive it, that's up to them. But that's why I thank God for the circle of prophets and friends that I have because God is speaking. You know what I'm saying? Any, any of the men and women of God give a release of word. Hey, I believe and I trust them. I trust the people in this on this call. I trust the people that God has given me. And if I have a question, I'll ask. You know what I'm saying? I ask the Lord and I'll ask them. Even the other day, Sean had the uh, vision from the Lord about the blackouts. Well, I, I asked him, Sean, where? Where are the blackouts going to be? He immediately started listening to the Lord and the Lord spoke to him again. So you have to have a positive, positive interaction with the men and women of God. Don't go to no man of God challenging them. I'm telling you now, you in trouble with God.
You you don't go to want to go at some hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? You don't go them sideways. Well, that went God. You know what I'm saying? Your blessing already cut. Well, I don't receive that. Okay, you also don't receive the blessing that came with that. God don't play with stuff like that. His word is true. God stand on his word. If you have a problem, ask the Lord, Father, I don't understand this word that came forth. Father, I just don't see it. Can you reveal it to me? Go to the man of God. Hey, Sean, um, brother, I don't understand what you just said. Can you help me with that? Can you can you give me some more? And in, in your humbleness and seeking God, God can receive you if you come to him humble and contrite. But, you know, it's a lot of people out there, and I pray for you. Your spirit ain't right, and you ain't right. And you coming against the men and women of God. You coming against the prophets. You coming against your pastor. I'm telling you now that God going to back his servant. He going to back his servant before he, back, he, he coming to you. He just, he just going to do it. And you don't come against God's anointed sideways. You know what I'm saying? Trying to clap back or whatever y'all stuff y'all be doing. I'm telling you, it's, your de it's detrimental to you. So uh, just come humbly. Ask questions. There's nothing wrong with a question. Even Jesus said, God says, come, let us reason together. If you don't understand it, even if you think, uh, and stop thinking. A lot of times we think too much. You think, nah, I don't see that. No, prophecy is not what you see. You know what I'm saying? If it was somebody what you see, you can just go and live your life and do what you want to. If the Lord give a word to someone for you, you need to consider it. You need to, well, that the Lord is saying that this is what his will is for my life. And I've heard people say, well, prophecy is optional. Bro, if it was optional, why God waste his time and even tell you? You know what I'm saying? It's optional that you do my will or not. Okay. So I, you'd be surprised at stuff I've, I, I heard people tell me and I've heard. So it's, it's a glorious thing to hear from the Lord. I don't know if anyone has anything else they would like to share about the things that they've heard or seen or. Yeah, uh, actually, something came to mind. Uh, so, like, for me, like, um, I was I had visions before and dreams, but I know the vision been kind of picking up, you know, and I was talking to you about this child before, like. I like see something and the Lord be like, what do you see, my son? Okay, I tell yeah. him what I see. And he, I, I tell him what I see. And he said, that's right, my son. It's almost like he kind of like building me up, like, you know, and then, you know, I'm seeing all these things. He like asked me, like, what do you see? And it, it remind me of, uh, if you read the book of Zechariah, you know, uh, Zechariah went through that same process. Jeremiah went through that same process. That's not like a qualification of how God speaks. It's, you know, just a form of way he spoke to me that time. Uh, so maybe think about that in the Bible. But, you know, when the Lord was doing that one day with me, then that's when I seen that vision of the blackout. You know, I seen like all those houses and stuff like that. And it was just like one by one, these buildings and like, houses, the lights was cutting off so fast. It was just spreading so fast. And then I heard the Lord say, a blackout was coming. He said, tell my people. You know, that's when I started praying by more. I talked to you about Charles and I prayed about him more than the Lord revealed to me one of the locations, London. Um, and uh, one thing the Lord actually did tell me recently, about like three weeks ago, the Lord told me he woke me up in the middle of the night and I'm praying me and my wife. And he said that a major drought is coming to Southeast Asia. I'm like, okay. And I prayed about it. And I'm like, you know, I was like, Lord, this, this is what you want me to say. This is what you want. I always make sure like everything lines up with what, what he want me to do. He like, what you tell this to people. And then now, like, I seen somebody comment on my page and they was talking about how, like, you know, um, like China, South China had like a major draw. And Southeast Asia, what makes most of Southeast Asia is China. So I looked up on articles and like, I seen like China. South China's going through a major drought, like with one of the like uh, major rivers and stuff. Like they're going through droughts that's like they never seen before, you know. And basically, the Lord told me about that like two weeks ago, you know, before it even happened. So that's something that came to pass. And you know, we get these type of warning dreams and stuff. It's not like we receive like, oh, this is something cool, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people's lives is you know affected by this, you know. So it's like the Lord wants to release this stuff so people can prepare for it you know, and be ready before it happens. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, some of you guys might be called to be watchmen. You know, Lord reveals, you see, like, warning things of things that come and it's important that we be obedient to speak out these things. Um, I know sometimes some of the stuff we, uh, 
you might receive from the Lord. It might seem like in your head, like, am I really getting this? But, you know, that's where that faith comes in, that intimacy with God. He will reveal you these things, and it's important just to, you know, talk with the Lord about it. He'll confirm what you definitely, what you saw. But, um, yeah, that's just something that came to mind about the, something that came to pass or how the Lord speaks to me. Um, also, like, I think that sometimes people think, like, when the Lord speaks, it has to be, like, it just, like, this powerful voice. Um, there are different ways that he speaks. You know, God just doesn't speak in one particular way. And a lot of times it'll be a still small voice. Um, it could be messages through visions, through dreams. Um, and sometimes it'll just, it'll just be like your own thoughts. You know, the word of God says that we have the mind of Christ, you know, so a lot of his thoughts, you know, could be our thoughts, not all of them, but you know, the closer that you get to God, you're, you're more Christ like minded. So a lot of my stuff are just, it's just like downloads in my mind. I'm like, why am I thinking about this? And I'm just writing it all down. So it's important to just write down the things that you're hearing, these things that are being placed in your mind, um, your, your dreams, write down everything, write down the colors, write down the words you heard, um, pictures, um, anything that you can remember, write it all down. And the Holy Spirit, is the one that gives us the interpretation. It's not us. You know, we can't do this stuff on our own. You need the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. He is your interpreter. He's the spirit of truth. And he is just the one that, that gives us these messages and not only gives us the messages, but he'll interpret it, ter interpret what it is that he's trying to say. And if you're not sure, if you're not sure about what you receive, you know, go to the Lord. Say, Lord, I don't understand. You know, what, do you, what is it you want me to do with this? What is it that you're, you're showing me? And just spend some quiet time with them. You know, pray about it. And he will reveal it to you. You know, he just didn't give you these messages. He's not giving you these dreams, these visions, these words, just for you to sit on it. There is a reason why he, he, he's given out these dreams. He's given out these warnings. You know, he wants people to come into a place of repentance, you know, and he also wants people to prepare for what's to come. But... We are the messengers of God. We're the mouthpiece for God's people, for, um, you know, for God here on earth. So it's important that we take this position seriously because, you know, the word of God says that the blood of the people was on our hands once the Lord shows us this stuff. You know, so we have a responsibility as like Sean said, watchmen, because that's what it's called. And I didn't even know about this. The Lord told me this. You know, I said, why is it God? I remember one time I was getting these dreams about um, just all these warning dreams. And I was like, why is it that all of my messages are like destruction? You know, and the Lord said, Ezekiel, you know, and I, I turned to Ezekiel and he just kept telling me, Watchman, Watchman, you know, that you're a Watchman. I, I had no clue what that was. But it says in, in Ezekiel, you know, we, we're supposed to be watching, we're just modern day Watchmen. You know, we don't have a lot of the topics that were talked about. I'm um, in the biblical times because times has changed, but God hasn't changed. He still speaks. He's just going to speak about the things that's going on today. You know, and I think that's where a lot of confusion comes in because people will say, why is God talking to you about this? That's not the Lord. He didn't talk like that in the Bible because we're not living like in biblical times. Yeah, we're, um, there's still like um, uh, things that are going on. People living in sin, you know, like in biblical times, like we're living in the days of Noah right now. You know, the drinking, um, giving in a marriage, you know, all of that stuff. But it's just a different form. You know, there's there's a different where we're in technology era. We're in the technology era where we, there's a uh, social media and entertainment stuff going on. I, I'm getting words for, and a lot of you all, a lot of people, a lot of people I see that they're getting dreams about celebrities. You know, God is speaking right now about um, particular things. And you have to be sensitive you have your spirit has to be sensitive to what the holy spirit is speaking so it's important to write this stuff down meditate on the word of god and spend time with him so that he can reveal to you what it is that he wants you to do with the messages that he's giving you and i want to say real quick in the bible say uh my sheep know my voice um there's so much revelation in that so when it said my sheep know my voice that means hearing the voice of god is for anybody that seeks the Lord, you know, if you earnestly seek um, the gifts of the spirit and you're a child of God, you know, you feel like 
you can't hear from the Lord, you know, diligently seek him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And you will come to know his voice as you become more intimate, God. Like, you know, I think, you know, something that really changed me was, it's like when I spent time with God, really understanding the, the father side of God. Like, this is my father I'm talking to. I'm not talking to just some air, you know, I'm not talking to nobody, you know, I'm talking to my father in heaven. I'm talking to somebody that, that that created everything, you know, and the the love that God has for you, you know, what I'm saying that's so deep and it makes you want to draw closer to, uh, to to the Lord, you know, and you know the Bible said, you know, as we draw close to God, He will draw close to us. So that means when you draw close to God, He draws close to you. There's more access that you have from God. Like obviously, what. Um, you know, we have that access to talk to God and hear from, but when you grow more closer to the Lord, he's going to reveal more things to you, you know, and, you know, also too, Charles, you saying like, you know, your father, but you're, you say you're my son. Like when the Bible said my sheep know my voice, you know, the Lord's voice as you grow intimate with him, you know, the difference when the enemy try to uh, speak to you or, or try to attack you, whether through dreams, you know, sometimes like, uh, sometimes like you might get a dream from God, but the enemy try to come in and throw a little confusion. And it's important to have that, that discernment and that intimacy with God, because then you might think the whole dream from the enemy, but it's really not. It might be like a certain part, but the other parts was from God. But that's all come from that intimacy with God and knowing his word as well. You know, so um, and then also being still, you know, so many times we live in a culture where uh, we always moving around, you know, we're always doing something. You know what I'm saying? We won't ever take that time just to sit there and just be still with God. You know what I'm saying? It's not wrong. You can talk to God while driving, but I, I really, me personally, I really value being still with God. Like God taught me before I, I even knew his voice. I feel like I didn't know his voice. I was sitting in my room for three hours, just, just sitting there listening. And I didn't hear nothing, but I knew I was in his presence, you know, and I was thankful. I was thankful. God, he really matured me. You know what I'm saying? I, I speak to a lot of you guys right now that feel like y'all might not hear the voice of God. Like, I'm telling you, you guys will hear the voice of God. I'm speaking faith. I'm speaking life to you in Jesus' name that you will hear the voice of God as you diligently seek him. Don't believe the lies of the enemy because I know in that stage, the devil tried to attack so hard, you know, thinking there's something wrong with you, stuff like that. You know, like, why is it not working? But just be patient. Wait Amen. for the Holy Spirit to come upon you to speak to you. The Lord wants to speak to you. That's what God told me. The Lord wants to speak to you. Amen. You know, but we have to want to diligently seek Him and obviously live a lifestyle of obedience as well. Because sometimes what can hinder things is sin, you know, or disobedience or rebellion, you know. But I just want to say, as you diligently seek the Lord, you know, you see your life change in an amazing way. You know, God wants to speak to you. Amen. Either, either one of you guys got any uh, tires? Excuse me, or rain. Yeah, I just wanted to say something. Um, you know, like First Corinthians twelve twelve talks about how uh, we are the body, and we the body the the Lord made the body has many parts. So if you think about it, uh, you know, I'm just maybe a finger of the body. So if we get together as a body, as a collective, and we, you know, you study. You learn to hear, learn to hear the voice of God. You study, you train as a collective that will like strengthen the body so we can do the Lord's will here on earth. Whether that be, it's it's all about souls, you know, winning souls for the kingdom of God. That's that's our assignment while we're here. So the Lord's been telling me, you know, if we all get together as the body and we study, we learn, learn to hear his voice, learn to wait on him that will strengthen his body as a whole so that's one thing i want to say you know i just want to encourage you know just study the word mm -hmm. uh learn to hear his voice you know just try with everything in you to just take dedicate some time throughout the day you know if you're doing things you say okay i'm gonna read the word for 30 minutes okay later on in the day i'm gonna pray for an hour and then at night uh i think like uh sean and camille was saying you wait on the lord i i can remember waiting three hours for the Lord, you know, wait for him to quicken me. And as you wait, he's, he, you waiting, he's drawing you in, he's drawing you in and all your thoughts, everything you're thinking, the Lord is constantly drawing you in, even though your thoughts are probably all over the place. You just wait. You could play like a worship, worship instrumental 
and you could just you just wait on the Lord. You can read scripture and you just wait and the Holy Spirit will draw you in. He'll continue to draw you in and you you will hear his voice. So those are some things, you know, that the Lord had me doing. And um, yeah, that's I just wanted to share that with uh, whoever's listening. Like we're the body. He's you know, he's rising, <laughs> raising, he's raising us up. So <laughs> let's go, Holy Spirit. Like, let's go, y'all. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Hey, Amen. I, I have to agree with everybody, man. Of God, just so on point with it. And and I guess another thing too, we um, when it comes to the prophetic, most and I'm just so grateful. I'm so blessed to be connected that God has brought so many different prophetic people, prophetic voices across my path. I'm grateful for it because you know everybody don't have that but i'm grateful for you guys amen and um but the prophetic i think some of the you know like the brand new believers in christ the baby christians they they don't they don't understand that cost though and that warfare that comes that can come with being a being prophetic flowing prophetically as well having that prophetic anointing what some of these people have been through in their lives amen now prophecy it is a blessing it is a blessing receiving a word from the lord but it like you said i think the woman of god said it earlier it's it's a seriousness to it as well it's a seriousness to it it um you know when we receive a prophetic word it comes with conditions it it can come with some conditions and like you guys were saying it can take time before that prophetic word comes to pass glory be to god it's just yeah i mean with on social media it's my goodness my god the social media you see so many people they'll come they'll come to your clubhouse room or to your TikTok live or Facebook live. They're seeking for that prophetic word, you know, about that future car or that future um, marriage or that mansion or financial increase or business deal. They're ready for that prophetic word. But it seems like with some of them, when it comes to, we give we could give a basic live on, on, on Bible study. You may only get two, three people. Mm-hmm. But that prophetic um, room about that, future house car mansion or whatever you got thousands just packed up (laughs) you're right you're right i think you know like brother camille said and i thought it like the the voice of the lord (laughs) and that's the same training i do with sean them that a brother did with me and the lord spoke in a small still voice it's real small and i'm something i don't know what i was looking for but the Lord was like, it's not going to change. Trust it. And so we just thank God for you guys here and for how you guys hear from the Lord. And we just want to just see if y'all take the time to see what words do you have for the world, anything um, that the Lord wants you to share with the audience. Uh, and uh, we just listen, see what the Lord has. And okay, I'm immediately hearing God say deeper. It's, it's go deeper. You need to go deeper in your walk with God. I remember when Camille was talking, she said she fasted for 40 days. If some of y'all, you're going through a season where it's, it's not normal at all what the Lord is asking you to do. You're going to fast for, for a, a large period of time. You're going into the spirit. You're going to have to spend some time on your face. You're going to have to spend some time in worship. You're going to spend some time by yourself. The Lord is going to call you to deeper, to trust him, to walk, receive it. If it sounds, if, um, if it sounds not normal or crazy, Okay, God deals in the crazy and the not normal. You know what I'm saying? He 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 he's, he walks in the realm of the unseen. Uh, it, it don't make no sense for God to tell somebody to go to a land. I ain't gonna tell you where or where you're going. But that He wants you to walk by faith, and we're in the season of walking by faith. Go deeper. Spend more time studying God's word. Sit with the Lord. Spend time an hour with the Lord in prayer or worship. Just turn off your cell phone. Listen. Speak, spend that time with the Lord. It's deeper walk where you will receive angelic visitation where the 
The voice of the Lord is strong. When the Lord will comfort you, when he will break things off of you, you ain't got to have nobody touch you or pray for you. In his presence, that's power. God will, excuse me, heal your brokenness where you've been lied to or mistreated. In his presence, there's peace that passes all understanding. So God says deeper, deeper, deeper. And I also hear marriage. It's a time for kingdom marriage. God wants you happy. From the beginning, he created male, female, husband, and wife to become one and having dominion. And it's some dominion God wants you to have, but you're by yourself. It's some dominion God wants you to have, but you need a co-pastor. You need a woman by your side. You need someone to help you with ministry. You need somebody to be praying over you. You need somebody praying with you to become, there's, there's more power in two than it is in one. He's coupling people together. Not just them, your anointing. Some of y'all, y'all have been called to be like Abraham and Sarah. It wasn't just Abraham. God said, you know, it's Abraham. Sarah was the mother of many, of many nations. It was you and your wife. You and your wife need to be praying together. You need to be asking God, send me my spouse. Anything you're doing that's outside of God's will, you got a girlfriend, you got more than one girlfriend, cut it off. Because all that's going to do is stop him from sending the kingdom spouse you got. So you want to be ready for it. But he, it's marriage. It's season of marriage and love. Children. Abundance. So this is what I was getting personally from the Lord. Um, for those that come across this video, um, you know, the Lord is just speaking to me right now. Um, he, he really wants you guys to see yourself as God see you. Um, I was hearing like insecurities, I was hearing doubt, you know, word curses, you know, um, it's a lot of things people might speak over themselves and uh, it could be word curses. Like Charles, you talk about a lot, like, you know, in the sense of like how people might say ugly or like people might look at themselves ugly or um, just like certain things, you know, that's just not how God look at us. Um, you know, I heard the Lord say like sons and daughters, I heard royalty. That's how God looks at you. He look at you as his son. He look at you as his daughter, uh, for the men or women that come across this video. And, um, uh, it's like, there's a, uh, it's a form of deliverance when you see yourself as how God look at you. God wants to free you from that. And from that, I heard, uh, like mighty boldness. There's going to be a level of boldness that's going to come inside you. That's from the, the power of the Holy Ghost that, um, that's going to uh, take you through uh, new seasons of elevation, you know, when you see yourself as how God uh, look at you, you know, and uh, the one way we can know that is spending time with the Lord, reading his word, you know, Psalms, Psalms is such a great book to speak over yourself when it comes to the word of God and other many things, you know, saying saying that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, saying that you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthen you, you know, the Lord wants you to see yourself as he look at you. It's a form of deliverance in that, and God wants to uh, free you from, uh, you know, insecurities or doubt or anything you might be going through in your life that uh, might be hindering you right now. Um, so I was hearing a few things. I was hearing, so for like the people who just don't believe that the Lord can speak like this, I was hearing pride. Um, God wants you to, he wants to heal you from that pride. You know, it, it's just a pride thing that, that people just believe, especially people in the church. For some reason, it's more Christians that have doubt um, about receiving these prophetic words um, versus like uh, someone that just doesn't know who God is. Um, so, yeah, he wants to he wants you to come to him um, with childlike faith. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord wants us to humble ourselves and just come to him like a child. You know, like how ch little children come to their father with this expectancy, you know, come to the Lord. Um, and expect, he wants us to, you to expect. And I was hearing time. Um, I gave a word yesterday about this. Um, we got 24 hours in our day. And a lot of people do not spend any time with the Lord. You know, start spending time with him. You know, I, I needed like at least an hour a day to spend with God alone. Because if, if not, I just don't feel right. Something feels off. You know, he just wants some time with you. Wake up in the morning, give thanks to God, you know, ask him, how is this day? Good morning. Thank you for giving me breath in my lungs. You know, help me to be more like you. You know, he wants a relationship with you. He wants more intimacy with you. And that's what I was just hearing real strong. He wants time. He wants your time. 
Um, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's religious, but he just genuinely wants a relationship with you. You know, while you drive, while you're just doing things in the house, while you're at your job, you know, you can be giving glory to God. God, thank you, Lord. Lord, I want you to use me today. How, how can I be used by you? What do you want me to say to this person? You know, be available. Be available to how the Lord wants to flow through you so that his will can be done for your life, through uh, for your life. His perfect will can be done in your life. Amen. I also heard there was warning. It's the time season. He's giving warning. These are the end times. He's soon to come back. He's giving warnings not to scare you. Oh, he's giving warnings so you can repent, so the people can repent, uh, whoever the, the, the word is for, so that they can repent. So take heed. And I saw uh, in Arizona, I saw I heard the word Arizona. And um, I heard the word Arizona and I saw, uh, uh, I saw something grow. Like, He's doing something in Arizona. And I know he's doing something in Texas. And I know it's a lot of people who are going to be moving to these areas. You're moving, God is drawing you there. He's, sometimes you don't even know why. Some people move in there, they don't even know. Some people do know. It's a lot of people who are walking by faith. But uh, I don't know. I heard dryness and I saw something growing. Like Arizona typically is, is known to be dry. But it's dry spiritually. So he's reviving some things that's over there. It's some corruption, some wickedness, some things that should not be. And the Lord is going to, he's, 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 he's doing a work over there. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, the Lord gave me a word about, and this is the way that he gave it to me. He said fat. And then he said Florida, Arizona, and Texas. He's pouring out his spirit in those states. You're going to see revival in those three states, Florida, Arizona, and Texas. You, you're already seeing some of it now but you're going to start to see more of it. Uh, he said, people are hungry in those states from our presence. Um, so I believe we're going to start seeing a great revival in those uh, three particular states. Not that there's not going to be revival in other places all over the world, but those are the three states that he gave me in particular. When you, when you were saying uh, Arizona, I heard in my heart, Lord, lead me to the tribe of the hungry. Like, like what Camille was just saying, like, it's a hunger, it's a yeah. hunger and like a thirst for righteousness over in um, Arizona. Right, that's what I heard in my heart. Lord, lead me to like tribe of the hungry. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I was getting a couple things from the Lord, but I was letting everybody get an opportunity to speak. Um, I'll say the first thing I was getting, uh, I heard like kids and children, like it, mm -hmm. it's I've been, I've been, I've been getting that a lot in my personal time. You know, uh, the Lord, you know, He loves, you know, you know, um, all His children. But it's, it's, it's something about, you know, Lord, He has so much compassion for kids. You Amen. know, Amen. And it, it's the Lord really want to see change with a lot of these kids. You know, Amen. a lot of these kids and children, they, they, they're being indoctrinated with things in this world. You Amen. know, especially social media. You know, uh, they're picking up certain things that. They might think it's how to live or how to speak to people, but it's just not how God wanted them to be. And the, the Lord really want to uh, see revival when it comes to these kids. You know, um, I, I even know like the other day when I was at the gym, uh, seeing like this, this uh, someone's in ninth grade and he just put on my heart to just, you know, minister to him. You know, uh, even put on my heart now, just kind of minister to a lot of like teenager kids, you know, because they need to hear about the Lord that, that Jesus loves them. Jesus got a plan for them. Jesus wants to use them and understand what it means to really walk with God. And um, the other thing I was hearing too was uh, God is about to elevate those. So um, this is for everybody that's been like diligently seeking the Lord, you mm -hmm. know, that really been walking with God for Come a while, on, trusting in the Lord, you know, God about to put you in, in a high position. He wants you to be seen. The Bible said we are a city on the hill that cannot be hid, you know, yeah, that yeah. we're the light of the world. So, uh, God wants us to be seen and we're really walking in obedience with him so that he would get the glory out of it. Um, and it's going to lead to revival for people. It's going to minister to so many people, even in the church and, you know, definitely to the laws. You know, Charles, you was talking about how on your uh, Instagram page, how so many people look up to these celebrities and stuff and 
they're 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 secular, they're worldly. Unfortunately, they're not they're not walking with God. They might say, I, I thank God in the interview, but we don't know what God they're talking about, you know. And also, they're not really walking in obedience with the Lord if they're talking about Jesus. So, uh, God about to put people that's really been walking with Him. Come on now, come on now, position so they could be seen. So it could lead from more revival in all different parts of the world. You know, the Bible talk about, I believe it's in Matthew 24, 14. It says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations, you know, and throughout the whole world. And then the end will come. So uh, there's a great revival that's coming. And I just want to say anybody that watched this, you can be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Just diligently seek the Lord, have a relationship with God. You know, God want to use you in a mighty way. You know, um, and as you seek the Lord, he will reveal to you, give you instruction on what uh, the will of God that he has for your life. You know, I mean, I'm in total agreement with you, what you said, Sean. Uh, the Lord was saying the same thing when you said about children. He's blessing children. He's anointing children. It, it, it's, it's a time like rain, rain to her, her baby woke up and told him the Lord, he saw this. and they saw it. It's a time you need to pay attention to your children. God's hand is over these babies, his angels. Your, your child gonna wake up and tell you, well, thus the Lord, you better listen. He ain't playing. The child ain't, ain't off. He ain't just talking. The Lord is speaking. He wants to use them at a young age as mighty vessels in the earth and make change at school where kids will be infiltrated and seized by Satan uh, to, to, to use those children. And then they be ambassadors where he can flow, now, uh, comes to flow of the Holy Spirit in the earth through the children. Children raising up, raising Growing up serving God all the days of life, doing great things in the earth, the manifestation of the sons of God. Also, I'm here in Cairo, Egypt, and like there's going to be a revival there, and he's restoring even some things that happened in Egypt. And I saw a library burn, like a library had burned. And so he's restoring, he's bringing back some lives, maybe some things that had been taken from the, the country or the nation of Egypt. He's restoring some things to those people. Even they, they've been robbed some things, and even their storehouse of heaven, they've been denied. And God is going to, it's restitution he's given to some people in Cairo, Egypt, and some other of these places. That God is going to raise up people like Ghana and different places, jobs and resource, ingenuity. Some of these young brothers, they're in, in poverty places. God unblessed them. They have, they have they're, they're, they're more intelligent than people in, like, uh, in rich countries. He's given them an opportunity to be seen, to heard, to go to university, to go to schools. Schools, God is building schools. He's building schools that are set apart. There's a lot of private schools that are going to be built. Schools in other nations are going to be built where God is going to be the center and foundation and they can pray and worship and kids can go there. It's a safe place where they're not going to be indoctrinated with this lies and this foolishness uh, and they're going to be owned by Christians. So, you, so the, the government can't put their hand on it. You can't tell them what they're going to teach. You can't tell them to teach this foolishness. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about, talk about God. And, and kids can pray. You know what I'm saying? We're going to read scripture and, and uh, at school. So it's a lot of private school. And then wrong, send your child to private school. You know what I'm saying? So it's a big, he, he wants his children set apart. Set apart. You know, and, and, and it starts at a young age. It starts at a young age. Mr. Brown? Amen. I, what I would tell the people that's watching is this word. I keep hearing this word so strong in my spirit. The Lord is saying for us to stock up. He's saying for us to stock up on our stock up on certain materials, stock up on foods, important foods, not some of these GMO government modified, genetically modified foods. But um, he's telling us to stock up. Because there will be, as we've already seen shortages throughout the country, throughout the world, we're going to start to see more. As it was spoken a few years back, maybe four or five years ago, that, that famines was coming upon the land. So the Lord is saying, stock up in this hour, in this season. And I, and I hear the Lord also. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. And then he's also saying, I heard the word like an economic shift, an economic shifting. Like there's even, I believe, I hear it by the spirit of the Lord, there's going to be like a change in, in like money transfer, like currency within the country as well. So people need to be mindful of that. Some of the, 
Like God, we're in a season where the Lord does not want us to depend on this government system. He does not want us. Some of our leaders in office, some of these politicians in office, they're they're corrupt. There's corruption, heavy corruption that's out there. And God is bringing us to a time in these end times where he wants us to depend totally on him. God is saying we're not going to have to depend on a 401k retirement account or whatever in these times that we're living in. His remnant that he's prepared, he, he's going to provide for us. The supernatural is going to increase. Amen. So I do believe that the Lord wants us to... Um, we're going to come into a time where we're going to have multiple streams of income. You know, we're not going to have to depend on that. Some of these nine to five jobs, they're about to fall down. Some of these government based, they're about to come down. God is bringing a lot of people into a time of entrepreneurship. He's going to give us the ideas and witty instructions to create our own. Amen. Um, Amen. And the Lord is also saying this, there's a changing of guard. There's a changing of guard. Amen. It's like a pass. He, he's passing it down to the, you, like you, I think you said this before, Prophet, that a few of the generals in the Lord, they're going to stick around. A few of them may go on home, but it's a passing of the torch to this remnant. You're going to see so many, this new young generation of people that's on fire for God. It's, it, the mantle has been released to him. But that's what I hear. I'm in total agreement with what you're saying. Hold on, I'm real quick. Is a change of guard in all in the politics, in the government, in entertainment specifically. And some of these, these celebrities, we, we look at celebrities the way we look at them, God don't like look at us that way. He does not like it at all. Uh, change of guard in schools, uh, in so many areas. So he's like raising us up to do the manifestation of the sons of God. And we're going to be doing different projects in all areas. Uh, schools, land, theme parks, things that give God glory. Go ahead, Camille. You know. Oh, no, everything that uh, Mr. Brown said, um, that's confirmation. You know, I've been hearing the exact same thing. Um, I actually have a word that he wanted me to release. He's been laying it something very heavy for the past week or so. He wants people to start investing in cryptocurrency. My God. Um, cryptocurrency. Like he's very been laying on this, uh, laying this on me very, very heavy cryptocurrency. Start investing in this, start seeking the Lord. Um, I know one uh, particular, not, I don't know anything about the stock market. I don't know anything about investment. All I know is what the Lord shows me. And he has shown me uh, one particular crypto called Shiba Inu. And I gave a word, I released that, um, I believe maybe like a, two weeks ago, but I haven't released this word cryptocurrency. He wants people to invest. Um, uh, inflation is coming. Um, I heard that during the fall is going to come. Um, uh, so everything that you're saying about the economy, it bears witness with what I'm hearing. Also, um, to get back to the children, the Lord wanted me to speak on this because he's pouring out his spirit in these last days. And that includes the children because he says in his word, that he's, he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh, you know, the young and the old, the men and the women, your sons and daughters. So it's important that he wants you to teach your children about angels. A lot of your children are going to have angelic encounters. Um, my children, they, they get angelic encounters. Um, the, uh, not too long ago, um, my daughter, she said she was taking a shower. She said the water was coming out hot. You know, she's in the shower by herself. The water's coming out hot, and all of a sudden she feels uh, a cold wind, like a flap. You know, like somebody's fan of her. She said she looked down at her chest. She, her chest was covered in, in feathers, white feathers. You know, my other daughter, she's getting uh, uh, visitations in her room. You know, while she's awake and while she's asleep, my other, you know, they're just, they're, they're the angels are going to be um, encountering your children and you have to teach your children what is going on to make them aware of the supernatural because of the spirit, because of God's presence that, that what's being poured out in these last days. So I just wanted to, and you know, if you, if you don't know, you need to start learning about angels, go back to scripture. How did the angels, um, you know, there's different types of made, um, angels. There's, uh, you know, angels that give messages. You know, there's angels that um, warn angels, you know, Angel Michael or Gabriel. So you need to learn this stuff yourself so that you can teach this to your children. And God is doing something in the children. He's been showing me this for the past few days. Um, he's working on the children. His children are very precious to him. 
so everything that you all were saying, um, I just wanted to confirm that it's, it's bearing witness with me as well as what I've been receiving. I just want to say something real quick. Actually, something that both of y'all said was confirmation what the Lord is telling me. So, so a lot of these kids and teenagers, um, they actually have an interest level, a high interest level about something deeper than the things of this world. And what I mean, like the supernatural, right? Um, they 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 want some like some deeper thing they want to know about themselves or something, you know. And when they look in the supernatural, unfortunately, a lot of kids and teenagers they look in supernatural in the sense of the demonic realm. Unfortunately, you know, witchcraft, uh, um, tarot cards, and um, and really they're trying to find their identity. You know what I'm saying? And you know this hunger for the supernatural and unfortunately some of these teenagers and kids going to the demonic world it's a bible verse i heard in my head it's like what, what was meant for you what was that bible verse? like what was meant for evil god gonna turn it for good so it's like it's like what i was getting it's like it's like there's gonna be a a, a a form of deliverance and revival for these kids and teenagers that there it's gonna be many testimonies that they're gonna come to jesus you know, they're going to be experiencing supernatural things of God. And they're going to have this strong faith. And I heard like the book of Acts. It's going to be like a time like the book of Acts is just like just many miracles, wonders, you know, people really walking with God and what was meant for evil, you know, what the enemy try to do in a sense of like their desire for supernatural, try to put like thoughts in the head going to the demonic world. It's like God going to like flip that whole skip, script around and many of them going to be saved. Many of them going to have testimony. They're going to have dreams and visions or even people that are not even in that type of walk. Like a lot of these kids and children, and teenagers, like you said, they're getting these dreams and visions, you know, um, and it's important that, you know, we minister to these people, you know, we minister to these kids. If you got kids yourself, tell them about Jesus, tell them about the prophetic realm, tell them about the supernatural things of God, you know, because the, the God we serve and Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the way the men of God move or the woman of God move in the Bible, supernatural things happen. Jesus' ministry was on the supernatural. Like, the, he, he performed many signs and wonders and miracles, you know. And, like, these things are going to happen, you know. And this guy was just telling me, like, you know, it's going to be, he's going to, like, flip the script when it comes to these kids and children. You know, it's like it's many of them going to be walking the, the supernatural. I even heard, like, Gen Z, you know. Um, it's going to be a great revival with them. And I heard childlike faith. That's why I was I don't miss that. I heard childlike faith. And they're going to have this childlike faith about them, you know, where they can walk in this way. But he want all his people to have childlike faith, you know. So that's what I was getting. Hey, man, I'm in agreement with everything I've heard. I also heard there's going to be uh, it's a time of, of abundant uh, signs and wonders and miracles, like creative miracles, things you ain't, hadn't seen before. Don't despise what y'all seeing on, on, on YouTube and Facebook. God going to use these platforms. It's going to be some Christian, solely Christian platforms. God going to use it. He's changing other guard. A lot of everyday, ordinary Christians who just all get it to God. God going to, they're going to be, super, super, they're going to be superstars. They're going to be movie, they're going to be actors. They're going to own platforms. God is going to use them because he wants a life of the world who uh, live right and do biblical principles to be seen by the world. So people, people follow celebrities. Okay, you want a celebrity to follow I need you to follow. I need you to follow some Idris, some holy, righteous living people. You want to follow some people? Hey, look at my daughter uh, Rain. You know what I'm saying? You want to uh, follow, follow, follow our brother, Pastor Tyrus. So he's raising up people who he can use that the world can see. And, um, so and thank God for you guys coming. We've been on here for a while. Thank God for all the information that's been shared. And um, Rain, if you can um, pray us out. Sure. And I wanted to, can I say one more thing yes, about what course, Minister course. Tyrus is saying? Yes. Um, that's with, about the economy. The Lord's been speaking to me about like for years for like food security, <laughs> water security, and he's going to put um, his phone followers and home owners of like water companies, um, food warehouses, um, just getting prepared. And the Lord showed me that the uh, Sheba Inu coin, I had a dream about. Uh, a week ago that there is going to be a big spike and we need to get prepared for this because it's coming and it's coming sooner than we think and the lord been placing on my spirit every like when i wake up in the morning so i get prepared get prepared for this so 
Amen. I just wanted to share that. So I'm, I could pray this out. All right. all right. Father God, we all come before you humbly, Lord. And we thank you for everything. We thank you for your word. We thank you for being an all-knowing God. We just thank you for everything, Father God. Father God, just I ask you just bless, bless your people, Father God. Uh, let us be, let us walk and be manifest sons and sons and daughters of you, Lord, manifesting your love to people as we go out into the marketplace. Father God, your word says it's about winning souls for your kingdom, Lord. So help us, Lord. Be with us as we go out each and every day. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us daily. Speak to us when we wake up. Your word says you will satisfy us with your love each and every morning, Lord. So satisfy, satisfy our hearts, Lord. Satisfy our hearts, Lord, every morning. And Lord, give us gladness in proportion to our former misery. Father God, your people that's listening, we've gone through, you know, we've gone through traumas, hurt. Lord, replace, replace that with joy, peace, and love, Father God. And we thank you, Lord. And I ask Holy Spirit, you strengthen us, strengthen us to lead lives of purity, uprightness, and living for you, Lord. Help us desire to only live for you, Lord, and to seek you in everything that we do. We love you so much, Father God. And I just thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I just thank you for being a loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know about him, Tyrus. I don't know if you, uh, I keep hearing your name. But um, maybe some it's a project coming, but I just keep hearing your name. And, um. Well, Devin, Father, we just thank you for another day. And uh, is everything good? Everybody, that's it? We smooth. Okay. Well, uh, God bless you. I hope you, everyone receive all that God has for you. Main thing, God wants you to repent. Keep his commandments. Live holy. Turn from your sins. And God wants to bless you. In Jesus' name.